Welcome back to another learning series with Mr. Knight. We put our bodies through so much. We take in so much into our bodies. If we put our bodies through excess stress and put so much into our bodies without cleaning up, our bodies will be like a filthy city. Luckily, there's a system in place to clean up our mess. This system is called the excretory system. So today, we're going to look at the excretory system. We're going to pay special attention to the urinary system and the nephron. Now, excretion is defined as the process by which metabolic waste are removed from the body. Now, metabolic waste are waste that comes from chemical reactions. And let us look at some metabolic waste. These wastes that we're going to focus on today will include carbon dioxide, urea, water, and salts. Now, carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide and water, they are produced as byproducts from respiration. And now, respiration is a process which, which we produce energy. So, the waste product from the production of energy, they are carbon dioxide and water. Respiration takes place in the mitochondria. And the waste products are excreted through the lungs. So carbon, di carbon dioxide and water will be excreted through the lungs. Another metabolic waste is urea. Now urea is produced by a process called deamination in the liver. Now urea comes from excess amino acids. So when the, when the liver breaks down excess amino acid, we get urea. Now, amino acids come from protein. So, too much protein will give you a lot of amino acids and then will produce a lot of urea. When the liver converts the excess amino acids into urea, the urea is being excreted either through the skin in the form of sweat or through the kidneys in the form of urine. Another metabolic waste includes salts. However, salts are not produced by the body, but we get our salt from minerals in our food. So, example like our sodium, our phosphate, our sulfate, we get those from the minerals. Now, the, the kidney is very important in getting rid of the excess salt, and salt may, ex may, may be excreted from our body in the form of sweat and also in urine. Now let's look at the urinary system. Now the urinary system made up of many parts and there's something I want to kind of let you pay attention to, especially for examination purpose. I will guide it towards that in a few seconds. Now first you want to identify the parts and what I want you to note right here that you notice there are two large blood vessels and there are some smaller blood vessels. Now the large blood vessels that take in blood to to organs, any organs in the body, and is the largest blood vessels and artery is known as the aorta. And so from the aorta, you have many branches of other arteries that take blood to different organs. In this case, we're going to focus on the renal artery that takes blood to the kidney. And we also have the major vein that takes blood away from organs towards the heart, and that is called the vena cava. That's the biggest vein in the body. Now, attached to this major vein, you have smaller veins, and the one I'm going to focus on today is called a renal vein. That one takes blood away from the kidney. Now, from the kidney that is producing urine, the urine will be deposited in the urinary bladder by the ureter. So, notice the spelling right here, ureter. Now, the, now the urinary bladder will temporarily store urine. And when urine is stored and the blood is filled, then through the spinsor muscles that will be at the base of the urinary bladder, they will contract and relax and release urine out of the body through the urethra. 
So the urethra is responsible to take blood out of the body. Now, what I want you to focus on, just to make a note, I want to zoom into this, and so you can able to see exactly what I'm talking about. Now, notice the blood vessel here. The aorta, which is taking blood towards the kidney, it travels, then it deposits bl blood in the renal artery. So this one right here is the renal artery. The bigger one, it is the aorta. All right. Now, the kidney will filter the blood and take out the waste. Now, when it's returning from the kidneys, it will go through the renal vein. So the renal vein is taking blood away from the kidney and deposit it inside of the vena cava, which is the major vein. All right. Now, just to show you the comparison on this side, if you only see one blood vessel, either two or away from the kidney, you, can, you will label those as the renal artery. So if you see only one going towards the kidney, then it's renal artery. If you only see one going away from the kidney, then it is called a renal vein. Again, on this side, if you see those come in and attach to a larger vein and a larger, and a larger artery, then it is um, aorta, vena cava, renal artery, renal vein. So make sure you know that distinction, especially when you're looking at examination questions. Now, the kidney itself, which is the organ that filters blood and remove waste, it also have many parts to it. And so let's start from the outermost part. The outermost part of the kidney will be our capsule. Okay, so that will be our capsule. So notice the outer region and then when you go on the inside you will see the medulla and the cortex so notice the two parts that are separated there the medulla and the cortex now the medulla and the cortex they are separated right here notice from the outside which is the capsule and then we have our cortex which is this part biggest part right here and then the other region is the medulla so there are two parts cortex medulla and then we have inside of right here now um, where the medulla section is inside of these there you have the pyramid or you may call them the renal pyramid so these structures inside they are the pyramid and then you have this region right here which is the pelvis all right and this is the first place that urine will be deposited now, I want you to notice inside of the medulla, you'll see something here called a nephron. A matter of fact, the nephron is in two places. A part of it is in the cortex and a part of it is in the medulla. I'm going to tell you what, what the nephron will do in a short while. And now, leading from the kidney that carry urine towards the urinary bladder, that is the ureter. All right, and let's talk about the nephron a little bit. Now, the nephron, which is the filtering unit of the kidney there are there are many of them thousands of these things in each kidney thousands and thousands of these nephrons and they are responsible to filter they are the filtering units of the kidney and remember i make mention that a part of it is in the cortex and a part of it is, is in the medulla and that is why this broken line is showing you pretty much um where it is at so the uppermost part of the nephron that is located in the cortex and so for examination purpose again if you're seeing that a question asks where is the glomerulus or the Bowsman capsule located definitely it is in the cortex and the bottom half which is for example the loop of henley it is in the medulla now i wanted to notice right here now you have the glomerulus which is a network of capillaries which i'm going to kind of zoom in a little bit so the med so the glomerulus it is a network of capillaries now the glomerulus is found inside of the Boseman capsule all right and then leading from the Boseman capsule you have what they call the first convolution all right otherwise called the proximal convolution okay and then we have leading here now is the loop of henley and then going up, you have the second convolution, otherwise called a distal convolution. And then that deposit the urine inside of the collecting duct. Now, I want you to kind of remember this, these two convolutions. 
the first and second is fine to remember but easy way to remember the, the, the proximal is closer to the Boseman capsule all right and so if you want to say it is in close proximity to the Boseman capsule so the easy way to remember it and then the distal one is further away is in a distance location from the Boseman capsule so easy prox closer proximity proximal convolution and the distant one is called a distal convolution all right so easy way to remember it what i want to focus on is what is happening inside of the glomerulus right here so let's look at that now let's zoom into that now this is what is taking place so this part is called a boseman capsule the the cup shape or the c-shape structure so you can just simply say it's a cup shape and then this will be the glomerulus which is the network of capillaries all right and what is taking place right there is what they call ultra filtration i'll explain that in a little bit all right so what i want you to understand now the network of capillaries will connect to an artery and it will go back towards a vein eventually okay so it is taking blood in the Boseman capsule and they remember because blood is coming from an artery it is coming under high pressure okay and so because of that high pressure substances will force themselves through the capillaries or through the walls of the capillaries and that is called ultra filtration so ultra filtration is substances leaving the capillaries under or due to high pressure all right the substances that will leave the capillaries into the Boseman capsule include urea salts glucose and water why is blood cells and blood proteins are not passed through the capillary walls is simply because they are too large so eventually these four substances when they leave the capillaries they will go into the tubules of the nephron or you can simply say the kid the kidney tubules all right let's look at what is happening to these substances because remember now before I even go further is that glucose will not be found inside urine however it is passed through the capillaries inside the tubules of the kidney but let's look what will happen to it now this will be any tubules such as the convolutions first second proximal and distal and also the loop of any so the same thing is happening at those three places a matter of fact along the tubules of the of the kidney um, you have it is covered with many blood capillaries so this structure right here is a blood capillary these on the blue side will be the tubules of the kidney so along the tubules these are things that are happening so i zoom into one aspect it is the same throughout the entire tubules so leaving from the, the tubules for example the convolution and the loop of enli the glucose will leave the tubules into the capillaries so that's what they call reabsorption so at the convolutions and loop of enli you have what they call reabsorption of substances taking place what is being reabsorbed back into the blood include glucose so glucose will be reabsorbed back into the blood in fact all the glucose will be reabsorbed and that is why you do not find glucose in urine however also what you will have inside um, what taking place right here is some of the water will be reabsorbed as, as well not all of the water and the reason why water is being reabsorbed because the consistency of blood must be maintained and so the kidneys help help in a process which we call osmoregulation which means it control the amount of water in the body so remember that word osmoregulation which is the controlling of the amount of water in the body so the kidney helps with that process now after glucose and some of the water is being reabsorbed what you have here the remaining portion which is going to be only urea salts and water remaining and that is what we call urine a matter of fact sweat is the same components as urine however urine will tend to be more concentrated with urea and salts all right so let's look at another thing right here and on a cold day versus a hot day what does that mean to urine first let us assume on both days you consume the required amount of water the recommended volume of water you're taking the same amount now on a cold days on cold days you do not sweat a lot 
okay in fact you do not sweat from for the most part and so the urine will contain much more water and the urine will be very dilute and have a pale yellow color in fact it appeal, it will it will appear kind of a clear or colorless for the most part it will have color but when it's streaming it will seems colorless now on a very hot day bear in mind you're taking the same amount of water you sweat much much more and once you're sweating much more then the urine will has less water and the urine will be more concentrated which means you have less water potential and so therefore it will be very concentrated with salt and urea hence you will have a darker color a darker yellowish color all right so now we are at the end of our lesson and so i want you to keep watching and just simply subscribe and i will see you in the next lesson